Okay guys, I'm back with another video. So for today, we're going to be doing another color grade video and it's going to be kind of in the style of Samuel Elkins. Don't forget, go ahead and follow us both on Instagram. Me and my brother, I will leave our usernames down below on the screen now so you guys can go ahead and follow us over there. These photos will be posted on our accounts so you can get a kind of rough look of what we've been doing. Just in case you didn't know, here are some of his photo examples. So as you can see, he uses quite moody kind of color grade. Everything's quite muted, desaturated kind of looks. He does use a lot of green, so if you can do, try and get a photo with some greens, like some trees, some bushes, some flowers and stuff. Obviously, if you can't do that, then just make do with what you've got and work with this video. And this should give you a rough idea on how to make a moody color grade with the photo that you've got. Okay, so this is the photo that we're going to be working with today. This is a photo of me in Menorca, Spain. And I'm going to be trying to make this look as moody as I can with reference to Samuel Elkins' photos to see if I can kind of replicate his look. Now, obviously, I don't have a very similar style to him. He's doing a lot of stuff in foresty kind of wooded areas. So he's got lots of greens and misty environments that he can really work to his favor. So I'm going to try and have a go at using this to see if you guys can match a similar kind of color grade. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get rid of this little sign down here on the rock. So I'm going to simply do that by coming up here and selecting the spot removal tool and just kind of making it a little bit larger and then just trying to move it around a bit see if I can get a rough coverage of that point. Okay, there we go, so we've kind of hidden that point. You can't really tell, you can do that step in Photoshop. I'm doing it in Lightroom simply because I want to keep this image as raw as I can. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my photo, but first of all, I'm just gonna have a quick run through of his photos and get a rough idea of what he's been doing. So if we scroll down and say, let's say we select this photo here, this is kind of similar to style to the one that we've got. We've got lots of blues in our photo and not many greens. So it's kind of similar to this one. So as you can see, he uses a fair amount of grain in his photos, which we can achieve in Lightroom as well and as well as that he kind of crushes his blacks and makes everything quite desaturated so let's have a go at doing that with our photo and see what we can get to okay so the first thing I want to do is try and have a go at taking down the yellows a bit and bring the temperature down a little bit more blue so we can kind of go with this feel with these two photos here where he's got more blues than greens and yellows so if we bring it down I'm thinking to about let's say 4975 okay so I'm gonna leave the exposure and contrast roughly how they are at the moment because I feel like this image was exposed pretty well when it was taken. So I'm gonna bring up the highlights just a little bit, maybe up to about plus seven max. And then I'm gonna bring down the shadows a bit, just kind of manually do a bit of contrast. So I'm gonna bring it down to probably about minus 30, minus 40. Okay, now as we can see from his photos, all of his blacks seem to be quite washed out and he doesn't really make them very dark. It kind of fades them out a little bit. So we're gonna try and fade out our blacks by pulling up the blacks here, give us a little bit more detail in the shadows, only leave it there, and then bring up the whites a little bit as well, just kind of make the image a little bit brighter. Okay, so we look at those images, most of them are pretty desaturated. Now, on here we have the panels of vibrance and saturation, two very different things. So what I'm gonna do is bring the saturation down a little bit and bring the vibrance up a tiny bit. So if we bring the saturation down a notch or two, but then just to counteract that a little bit, to bring a little bit of color back in, bring the brightness up to about plus eight. So now as you can see, if we do before and after, there's before and there's after, we're kind of going for more of a muted, desaturated look. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna focus on is the tone curve. So we're gonna do our normal three point tone curve, so we can make the S kind of shape. So now we've got those three points, what we're gonna do is first of all, work with our blacks and our shadows down on this end of the graph. He phased these out quite a bit. So bring this up until we get a kind of faded out look in our blacks, not too much. We don't bring it up too high that everything just gets completely, loses its detail and everything. So not down here, somewhere in the middle, I'm gonna say here looks pretty good. So we do before and after, you can see we've kind of got that nice fade going on there. Okay, so now what we can do is bring up the highlights just a little bit, just to make the image look a little bit brighter. And I might try and bring up the shadows just a little bit more. Actually, no, let's leave them where they are. Mid-tones, I'm just going to bring up a tiny bit just to brighten up the image, but you can probably leave that roughly where it is on the graph. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the tone curve and then with the tone curve. As you can see, we've kind of faded out those blanks a little bit more. Okay, so now this is where most of the work is going to go into doing the photo. So as we can see from lots of his photos, he brings out, especially in these greeny photos, he makes his greens look kind of desaturated, deep greens, and then with his blues, kind of a grey, bluey, white, and quite desaturated. So we're gonna work a lot with the saturation panel down here and a little bit with the hue adjustment panel. So we can leave the oranges where they are and yellows is the first one we're gonna work with. So if we bring them all up to the right, it makes it look a little bit green, all the way to the left, a little bit pinky orange. Now, I'm gonna bring the yellows down a little bit, pretty far, I'd say to about minus 50, minus 60, I'd say. Leave it about there, just to kind of 
bring away those greens from the rocks. Okay, so now we're gonna come down a little bit. Now with the greens, as you can see, we haven't really got any greens in this image, so we're gonna kind of leave that in the middle, leave it where it is. Now the next one we're gonna adjust is the blue and the aqua. The purples, we can kind of leave where they are again. Okay, so coming down to the blues and the aquas, we do not really want to bring this down, kind of make our photo look very greeny, because if we go onto his photos, he's got quite nice, soft blue colors. So we're gonna bring that back up to zero and bring our blues to the right a little bit just to make them a little bit more blue, get rid of the aqua, and do the same with our aqua as well. Might just bring the aqua to the left, kind of give us more of a pastel kind of feel. So there we go, there's our before and after. As you can tell, we're getting quite close to his look at the moment. Okay, so coming down to the saturation, we're gonna to want to bring down the saturation on the yellows a little bit, because if we go too far to the right, we're gonna get more of an orange teal kind of look, which is not really what we're looking for. A similar kind of situation with our blues, but again, maybe not quite so much, because that's where most of our color from the image comes from. So there's our before and after. As you can see, it's looking a little bit better. Okay, so we do want to adjust the luminance a little bit, just so I can pop out the image a little bit more and see if we can brighten up these rocks. So we're gonna do that by adjusting the orange and the yellows. So first of all, the orange should do my arms and legs a little bit. If I bring it all the way up, you can see I pop out much more, but we're gonna bring it up maybe halfway, about 50. Yellows, we're gonna leave roughly where they are, because if you bring them up too much, it's gonna bring away from the image and your eyes are gonna to go towards the rocks and not towards me. Okay, so we're gonna leave the blues, I think, where they are, because if we bring them up too much, again, we're gonna get a similar problem. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is split toning. This might try and bring us towards his style here, where you can see in the shadows and the highlights, the highlights are quite light blues, and the shadows we've got kind of dark, kind of desaturated, greeny kind of colors. First of all, just bring up the saturation to about 10 to 15, let's leave it about 13, just so we can see what we're working with to get our color. You can also press Alt or Option when you are scrolling with your color here to kind of give you the full color spectrum so you can see roughly what you're working with. However, I'm gonna leave that alone and I'm just gonna scroll along with the saturation up a little bit so I can get a good kind of view of what we're working with. So I'm gonna try and bring it up to the blues, light blue section here for the highlights. We don't want to bring it too far to the left to get greens in it and again too far to the right to get the pink. So somewhere in the middle, you can usually see where it best fits with the image. I'm thinking about there, about 200, 206. Similarly, we're going to go into the shadows and I think the shadows as well, we're going to try and go for those dark kind of blues to get that desaturated dark look in the shadows. I'm thinking that's a little bit too blue but we can always bring down our saturation. Any further to the right, we're getting a bit pink so I'm going to leave it about here, 230. And this is without the split toning and with the split toning, a subtle difference but you can definitely see the effect it's making. I am going to bring down the saturation in the shadows just a bit, maybe to about four or five. Now, simply because this photo was taken on a f1.7 prime lens, we have got a little bit of a halo going on so I am going to take the radius up to about three and then bring the sharpening up just a bit to try and counteract that around my body. There we go. We're not going to do it too much because it'll be too noticeable, but we are trying to add a bit of noise and grain to the image as well, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Next thing we're going to want to do, I think, is add a little bit of grain. So, for example, when we look at some of these photos, let's pick this one up here. As you can see, there is a little bit of grain going on in the picture, kind of that retro, moody kind of color grade. We're going to bring the grain up a little bit, I think. We're not going to want to do too much that is so noticeable. Usually at this point, it's a good idea to kind of zoom in. There we go. I think that's a decent amount of grain. We don't want to adjust the size too much really, that's about right. Okay, now down in the camera calibration, I'm going to leave this mainly as it is. I think I'm going to bring the greens up a little bit more, just so I can bring some colour back into my arms. We don't want to adjust the red primary too much, because we're going to get some really vivid changes on my arm and skin tone, and it's going to look a little bit strange. We're going to leave those as they are, and the same in the blue primary. If we bring it too far to the left, we're going to get quite a bit of that orange teal look. Okay, so what I am going to do is try and fade out the blacks a little bit more, and make the image a little bit brighter. So I'm going to do that by pulling up the black slider. I think I'm going to leave it at about 80 not too much again, um, and then come down to the tone curve, and I think that is looking quite nice. We've got a nice faded look on our photo there. Okay, I am gonna put the clarity up probably to about five or 10, not too much, just so we can get a little bit more detail going on. Okay, so that is the rough color grade of the photo, so I can do a before for you and an after. As you can see, we've got a nice kind of moody look going on in this photo. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is use the brush tool, bring the exposure up just a small amount and rub over the rocks a little bit just so we can bring out a little bit of brightness and detail in the rocks in various places, just so it looks a little bit more contrasty. So anywhere where you can see some highlights, just kind of brush over them lightly, just to kind of get a bit more interest in the image. Okay guys, so that is pretty much the end of the video. Again, there's the before and there's the after. You can see I faded out the blacks and brought down the saturation a bit. Now, if we were gonna go more Samuel Alkin style, it would be a good idea to try and get some more 
foliage in your shot, especially the dark greens, foresty kind of areas. But as you can see, he doesn't always work with those colours, so like down here, and he's got some nice light blues and teal going on. So obviously there is some variation you can go for. So do have a little bit of a play around and see where you can get to. Having said that, if you do want me to have another go at doing another tutorial, but instead of going for the kind of light blue and grey kind of look that he's got, go for the dark green, foresty kind of moody look, then do leave a comment down below in the description and I will get onto that and I'll film one for you guys to let you guys know how to do those colour grades as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did make sure you leave a thumbs up down below and we will see you guys in the next video. Live long and prosper.